Different, abnormal, and very small. Those are just some of the words Olivia Radebe says have been used to describe her in her recently published memoir. The 27-year-old writer says her late grandmother encouraged her to persevere with her studies and with living independently, and she has. But Radebe says she still faces practical challenges navigating life in Johannesburg. You cannot uh, ask help and not pay someone, you know, because I'm not on a permanent job. And also the money that I get from the government is not enough to, st to sustain me to that certain level whereby I can afford to pay everyone and anyone. Like, it's a bit of a challenge. So in other ways, I have to beg someone to help me. There are hundreds of conditions that cause restricted growth, a chondroplasia being the most common, a genetic condition that results in short arms and legs. Radebe was never diagnosed as a child. Now, she says it would be too costly to go to a private specialist to find out. Radebe says she sometimes wonders what her underlying health issue is. Because at a later stage, I might be having other complications. So if I was diagnosed earlier, maybe I would have known or, or, that, um, okay, fine, in 10 years' time I should expect this, I should live like this. There are certain things that I need to, to avoid in order for me to have a long life. Specialized care isn't evenly available across the country. Parents have to look to big cities like Cape Town and Johannesburg to find the best resources for their children who show signs of restricted growth. Our hospitals in areas like uh, impoverished areas where there's a day hospital. So a parent will go and uh, take the child, but the, the nurses, the doctors are not aware of the condition that the child has. Raising awareness about people with dwarfism is one of the main reasons why Piet Nell established the nonprofit Short Statured Persons South Africa. That we can share ideas and come together and also that the public can know what we are about. The 57-year-old says he struggled with accessibility and discrimination throughout his life. Nell says the organization gives people like him more power to advocate for themselves and their unique needs. That's why they say nothing about us without us. You can't talk for us, we must talk for ourselves. Like I say, we must stand together and fight for our rights. And the country, he says, is starting to listen. Nell's group met with South Africa's social development minister to discuss their health and reproductive needs that go unaddressed. He hopes it will be the first step toward bringing more support within their reach. Linda Giftash for VOA News, Johannesburg.